What is up guys? This is Luke Hill for Kit Guru, and in this one we're taking a look at a new 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler from Cooler Master. This is the new Master Liquid PL360 Flux that retails in the UK for about £179.99. Aside from redesigned Flux series fans, Cooler Master is also keen to point out some of the other performance characteristics that have changed with the PL360 Flux. One notable point is the use of a dual chamber pump to optimise heat exchange efficiency. So, without further ado, let's take a closer look. Before we do that though, if you like what we do here at Kickeroo, give us a like and subscribe, it really supports the YouTube channel. Make sure you check out the main Kickeroo website, that really helps us out. And you can buy a cool t-shirt and all that stuff on the merch store. Let's get back into it. When it comes to the unboxing, you get a reasonable manual. There's mounted hardware and accessories for all Intel and AMD platforms, and that includes LGA1700 and TR4. And then you get a bunch of adapters and cables for fan connections, as well as the addressable Gen 2 RGB controller. Cooler Master uses a conventional 27mm thick aluminium radiator, albeit with fins that don't quite use the full volume of that 27mm thickness. As usual, the entire radiator is coloured black for a sleek appearance and possible thermal benefits. And there's also a fill or drain port near the tubes, but this is for warranty purposes only, not user maintenance. When focusing on the tubes, Cooler Mass use a sleek braided set to hide the underlying appearance of the tube and then it's using to carry the liquid. I think the braiding looks very good in my opinion. Flexibility is overall a positive as there is rotational adjustment where the tube connections enter the block. You can rotate this to fit your specific platform. And the tubes themselves also have a good degree of manoeuvrability with respect to creating angles from your chassis mount to your CPU heat spreader on the motherboard. The copper cold plate is tiered in its external form. This is absolutely fine as the size of the direct CPU heat spreader contact section is appropriate for most platforms, with the exception of Threadripper of course, which is just massive when it comes to heat spreader. And a potential benefit of this tiered cold plate design is that there is simply greater volume for the copper to occupy. This can have the benefit of allowing higher fin surface area within the block design, thus opening the possibility of enhanced heat transfer. I like the Cooler Master includes a tube of thermal paste, albeit a small one, instead of the pre-applied blob that we usually see on a lot of AIOs. Cooler Master's dual chamber pump that they shout loudly about is 12 volt DC powered and it has a maximum power consumption rating of 6 watts according to the specification sheet. We couldn't find much information on the pump operating speed as our motherboard suggested 9000 RPM which was pretty ludicrous and the spec sheet doesn't confirm anything with regards to the actual speed. We did, however, see some suggestion of around 3,300 RPM pump speed in the review guide. The modestly sized 40mm tall pump unit is quoted as having a mean time to failure of greater than 210,000 hours. I like that Cooler Master has kept the pump unit design sleek, not in your face, and reasonably sized. This is good for interference purposes, especially if you want to put it inside some form of small form factor or height restricted chassis. This sleekness does, however, mean that there's no pump-mounted VRM fan, which is a little disappointing given the hefty £180 price tag. There are two zones of RGB lighting and a reflective top cover which features that Cooler Master logo and can be manually rotated to the correct angle depending on your build orientation. I must say that Cooler Master does very well to keep the number of cables coming out of the pump block unit on the visible front side of your build to a minimum. So you've only got two cables, that's pretty smart. Sapphire, take note. The trio of 120mm Flux series fans feature interconnecting blades like we saw from Sapphire's Nitro Plus S360A competitor. This has the added benefit of strengthening the overall blade structure and thus potentially minimizing noise creating vibrations. The fans are rated at 0 to 2300 RPM and can actually operate down to 0 RPM, which is good to see, albeit of questionable use on an all-in-one liquid cooler. Nevertheless, that is a really positive speed range, especially with the use of a 4-pin PWM connection, so you do really get good granularity through most modern motherboards. ARGB lighting on the fans is handled by a series of LEDs and a braided 3-pin ARGB connector. This is ideal for compatibility with the main RGB software tools from motherboard vendors. And then I must say that I like the inclusion of rubber pads on each corner of the fans. This is a really simple, basic addition, but it will have the benefit of damping some noise causing vibrations. So kudos there. With respect to the warranty, you've got a mean time to failure of greater than 210,000 hours for the pump unit, according to Cooler Master. And they say that the fans are rated at more than 160,000 hours. So those numbers are pretty reasonable in isolation. 
and you do get this unit backed up with a five-year warranty, which is good, but it is what we would expect at the £180 price point. Anything less would be a bit disappointing. AM4 installation for the cooler was easy and straightforward, to be perfectly frank. You're using the default AMD back plate and the plastic retention clips. So basically all you do is leave the bracket on your motherboard, screw the relevant AMD clips to the block unit of the cooler, and hook the little sections of metal into the AMD plastic retention a finger that sticks out and then tighten the screws. It's really that easy to be perfectly honest. Connecting the fans and cables is a little bit more of a challenge though, especially because the sheer number of cables that there are. I guess the key point is if you don't have the addressable Gen 2 RGB box working as a splitter and a lighting hub, then your installation approach is going to be very motherboard centric. It would be good if this was highlighted in the manual saying you can use either one or the other. But by default, you look at the first section of the manual, it actually says how you should install it for the PL360 Flux with regards to the cables. So you follow the instructions with regards to the cables and then you realize, actually, you've made a mistake because this one that we're looking at has the addressable RGB controller. So you flip the page and that's how you should be doing it. It's quite easy to make a mistake and waste a bit of your time. Bear that in mind. Yes, I did do it. I'm going to admit that. Eye-catching RGB lighting is certainly a clear strength for the Master Liquid PL360 Flux. I think the styling is smooth, the colours are clear, and the LEDs themselves are bright. I also like that there are a couple of lighting zones added to the pump area, so it's not just the fans that get lit. We opted for Cooler Master's Master Plus software for RGB control, and while it's not as in-depth as Corsair IQ, which piece of software really is, it does a reasonable job of just controlling the lighting modes. You get the ability to set different RGB modes and more importantly, there's individual control for the several LEDs on the fans or pump cover or Cooler Master logo. That final point is a level of granular control that most motherboard vendor software packages will not offer. Aside from the relatively simple lighting control though, Master Plus software doesn't really do all that much in terms of anything else that's fancy. So if you're already happy with your motherboard control and would rather use that level of synchronization, I see no reason why you'd want to download this Cooler Master software. It's just very basic. For testing, we're using our usual go-to AM4 test platform. This is the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X processor running at Precision Boost Overdrive and primarily running at overclocked configuration of 4.45 GHz using a hefty 1.312 volts, which is around 1.3 volts delivered and over 210 watts of package power under load. The motherboard is a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master with its excellent VRM. We use a Seasonic TX1000 1 kilowatt power supply for clean power. We've got a Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super graphics card in its zero decibel mode. And the chassis is a fractal design Meshify 2 with three 140 millimeter chassis fans. For testing, we run a 30 minute looped section of Cinebench R23 and then we record the steady state temperature of the processor towards the end of that 30 minute run. The ambient conditions are around about 22, 23, 24 degrees Celsius and when we veer outside of that range and outside of the point where it's comparable to the other coolers, we will add in additional test runs just to make sure the data is valid. As always, if you want more details on our test procedure, our test settings, the comparison coolers, head on over to the Kikuru webpage. Let's jump into the testing. Let's start off with noise performance at 100% fan speed. This is important for getting an indication of where our performance expectations should lie based on noise output. Cooler Master's noise output numbers are actually quite reasonable and stay below 50 dBA at full speed. This is largely thanks to the quality of the Flux series fans used as the Trio's 2300 RPM maximum operating speed is undeniably high. Of course, there's also the excellent fan speed control range all the way down to zero RPM so this noise reading is simply a worst case scenario, and even then, it really isn't too bad. Despite the highly tolerable maximum noise output, the Cooler Master Master Liquid PL360 Flux doesn't really look to give up too much in terms of performance. The PL360 Flux is only a smidgen behind the highest performance contenders in our chart, and all of those coolers were louder than the unit we are examining today. Keeping well over 200 watts of overclocked Ryzen 9 5950X power below 80 degrees Celsius with a sensible ambient temperature is a very positive result for Cooler Master's new 360mm all-in-one. We adjust each cooler's fan speeds until our 40 dBA noise output target is reached. In order to get the unit run at 40 dBA, we have to reduce the fans down to 60% of their maximum speed when controlled through the motherboard UEFI. We did not change the pump speed. 
This 60% duty cycle presented as around 1300 RPM when checked within the UEFI monitoring tool and within HW Info software. Despite dropping down to 1300 RPM rotational speed on its three 120mm fans, the Cooler Master Master Liquid PL360 Flux is able to maintain a promising performance rank in our chart. Here, some of the notable Acetec competitors from the likes of Sapphire and Fantex are beaten out, though the Fractal Lumen S36 RGB presents itself as a formidable competitor, especially with its considerably lower £113 price point. Overall, Cooler Master does well in this 40 dBA noise lock performance test. Clearly, there's also another 1000 RPM worth of speed available on tap if the cooling performance needs to be ramped up, and that point should not be underestimated when focusing solely on 40 dBA thermal results. PBO results are not quite as positive for the PL360 flux as the manual overclock tests are. Here, Cooler Master's unit roughly matches many of its 360mm all-in-one competitors, but there are some alternatives that handle a little more package power or deliver a little higher operating frequency. To be realistic, the margins here are tight and are close to the error levels. With that said, Cooler Master's performance in this full fan speed test is not quite as promising as many of its other results that we have seen. The package power handled is a little bit lower than the top and the frequency is also a little bit lower. MOSFET temperatures are not great as we would expect from an all-in-one liquid cooler without a pump block mounted VRM cooling fan. At full fan speed, the three 120mm blowers blast their way to a decent VRM temperature result but the 40 dBA noise lock test shows a better picture for highlighting that incidental VRM cooling is not a strength for the Master Liquid PL360 flux, and that point extends to most other 360mm all-in-one liquid coolers that don't have specific VRM fans, with Sapphire's 3x120 unit being an exception to that point. If we focus first then on operating characteristics, it's clear that Cooler Master has delivered a high performance all-in-one liquid cooler that does really have top tier levels of performance. And that's actually the case without the fans being obnoxiously loud even at full tilt, as well as having superb speed control all the way down to zero RPM if you're that way inclined. So there's certainly a lot to like about the Master Liquid PL360 Flux from a performance perspective. Styling is another strong point too. The unit looks good and it feels of a high quality, which I always like to see, especially at this price point. The lighting is superb, even if the control software is basic at best. And the front side visible cables are perfectly tolerable thanks to the back side control unit. Albeit you will get a bundle of cables around the back side, but you can just shut your chassis panel onto those. So there's clearly plenty to like when it comes to lighting, build quality and overall performance. Plus you get a backup of a five year warranty, which is always really good to see. However, Pricing is certainly one area where the unit's really not very likeable. £180 in the UK is very tough to swallow, especially when that's Corsair H150i Elite Capellix territory with that cooler's superb IQ ecosystem. For £180, I'd probably want Cooler Master to deliver a more useful or in-depth software package, or I'd consider an included VRM fan to be reasonable at this price point, but we are well below pump-mounted screen territory, of course. And the reason I'm focusing on pricing quite a bit is because really stiff competition comes from particularly the Fractal Lumen S36 RGB cooler that we've reviewed and really, really liked. That's a 360mm unit. It's not Acetec. It's a cheaper OEM, but the performance is fine. It uses three 120mm PWM controlled RGB fans. It's got some RGB light in the pump block housing. So it's very comparable to something like the Master Liquid PL360 Flux. And the performance numbers throughout our testing do suggest that. I guess the key difference is that the Fractal unit is considerably cheaper at about £113 in the UK. So yeah, I know it's easy for us to make comparison against some really well-balanced, really well-priced coolers from the likes of Fractal or Arctic or Corsair. I mean, quite frankly, if we compare any of the all-in-one liquid coolers, especially the premium and pricey ones, against some of those competitors, they're all going to look pretty bad. With that said, I do think the Cooler Master needs to offer more at this price point because they are valid competitors and they are going to give realistic alternative options. So yeah, the Master Liquid PL360 Flux, it performs well, its noise output is tolerable, the lighting is fantastic. I guess it's just that price point that leaves me with a bit of a less than perfect taste in my mouth. With that said, the overall quality would make me look at this and put it on my list. And I just think the Cooler Master does need to touch on the pricing, which is very easy because they have complete control over there. If the pricing is a bit more competitive, then this is a high, high quality product that can certainly justify use in a high-end system because it offers high-end performance.
I've been Mukil for Kick Group. Thank you for watching this video review of the Cooler Master Master Liquid PL360 Flux. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you like the design of this cooler? Were you impressed by the performance? Are you happy to see Cooler Master really challenging at the ultra high end for liquid coolers? Or are you a bit disappointed by that price point? Let us know in the comment section below. As always, if you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon on the YouTube channel that really supports us. Please do head over to the main Kickeroo website. That's a big help for us. And then check out our Patreon page, our merch store. Interact with us on Discord and the likes. And check out our next videos in the next one.